everybody. Good. Okay. So, as we start our worship, we look at the words on the first page. Lord, speak to us, that we may hear your word. Move among us, that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers, that we may learn to trust you. Amen. And to get us going, the first song we've got is here the call of the kingdom that's inside you, your sheets. <laughs>
And we ask as we come to worship, we say sorry for those times, and ask for a blessing to help us with our confidence in our relationship with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we'll move into the final reading for today, uh, which is given by Sylvia. The Bible reading is from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. And it's Jesus being presented in the temple. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification, as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of pit doves, or two young pigeons, as required by the law of the Lord. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, devout man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had, led the, had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon <coughs> said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against, and so reveal their sharp, secret thoughts. And sorrow like a sharp sword will break your own heart. There was a very old prophetess, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of uh, Asher. She had been married for only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. This is the word of the Lord. Here we have our lovely new family, pleased as punch to have their tiny baby son. His mother has survived the very real dangers of childbirth and life is settling down. He's even almost sleeping through the night. I say almost because no babies sleep through the night till they're 25, do they? And he's just found his smile instead of wind. So now is the time to go to the temple to present him to God, just as the Lord of the Lord asked for, and to offer their gifts to God. If they'd been rich, they would have sacrificed a lamb, but a pair of pigeons was what was expected from a, a poor family. When they got home, they'd have a party. Friends, neighbours, everyone welcome to the party. And I wonder, when Mary looked back on her life, did she compare that party to the wedding party at Cana, when instead of cheap wine, they were served with the finest Chardonnay? In the temple they met by Simeon, a very good and devout and wise man, a worshipper of God, who had spent his life in service to God and had been rewarded with a promise that he would see the Messiah before he died. 
The line of prophets had died out more than 400 years before, but now there was an upsurge of people connecting with God, not just following the rules, but genuinely seeking to hear God's voice. Before Jesus was born, Zechariah was speaking out in God's name, following the birth of John, John who had become John the Baptist. And now here is Simeon, and later in the story there is Anna. The Holy Spirit is moving in the nation of Israel. He is preparing the way for Jesus to come onto the scene. What Simeon says is very significant. For me, as an older person, that the chanting of the not demitus at Evensong makes it sort of fade into the background, but actually the proper words are very significant. The Messiah was coming to the Jews. That's what the tradition and scripture and the leading rabbis taught. The Messiah was coming to the Jews. Not to the surrounding nations, not to the hated Romans, not to the despised Greeks, nor those foreign Egyptians, and very definitely not those hybrid Samaritans. The Messiah was coming to the Jews, and they were the ones that would receive salvation, not the other hoi But Simeon says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of the, your people Israel. The Holy Spirit is reminding him, giving him a nudge about the prophecies of old. In particular, there is Isaiah who says a great deal about the servant we call them the servant songs, these particular bits in Isaiah, and these are very important. Some little words from Isaiah. Listen to me, you islands, hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my birth, he has mention of my name. You distant nations, that's the thing that tells us that Jesus is a light to the Gentiles. This Messiah was, not for, was for all the people of the world and not just the known world, but those places that haven't yet been discovered. And Jesus, although he was far too young at that time to have a clue about it, was in the world to save the world take the people out of their ignorance and willful misunderstanding of God's instructions and turn them around in repentance. This prayerful and gracious old man had had his eyes opened by God so that he could actually identify Jesus as he was carried into the temple by his mother. In the midst of the hustle and bustle and surrounded by money changers and traders Amidst the throng of worshippers and sightseers, Simeon honed in on the one baby that mattered, the one child, the Messiah. In the midst of all this hubbub, Anna joins them. She's also moved to recognise Jesus in all his glory, despite the limitations of him being a very tender age. She too has been led to that spot by the Holy Spirit. She too has been listening to God for years and years. I sometimes wonder how it must feel to be so in tune with God that you could be as accurate as that. To be able to spot one baby in the midst of hundreds of people. I wonder how it would be, what it would be like to have a specific mission of that sort. You see, Simeon knew that his job was to identify the Messiah and speak words of prophecy over him. That would be his life's goal. So my question this morning is, have we identified 
our life's goal? Have I? So how do we find out? If the Holy Spirit is leading us in a specific direction, how do we find out what he is saying? I think the answer is very obvious. It's prayer. And when you've done your praying, the next thing to do is pray again. And if we listen instead of talking, eventually we absorb what God is saying to us. We form a mental picture of what the world will look like if we're doing God's will. But let's get back to this little group of people in the temple and to what's going on in the heads of Mary and Joseph who are listening to Simeon and Anna with awe and wonder and probably drawing a crowd who are rubbernecking at what is going on. People who know Mary and Joseph will be asking, who do they think they are? They're getting a bit above themselves. An old-fashioned expression, she's no better than she should be, will be going through some of their, lives, their heads. Officials of the temple would be very disturbed and anxious. Is this declaration going to find its way to the ears of the Roman authorities? Because if it does, their jobs will be on the line. Tourists and worshippers alike will be curious and asking questions about the background of the family of this baby. And Joseph and Mary will be overwhelmed with the sense of responsibility for guiding and protecting and teaching Jesus in advance of his later ministry and sacrifice. How are they going to manage to get it right? No parent seems to get it right. So how are they going to do it? And Mary also has the added problem of pondering on those words that will have filled her with fear and anxiety. A sword will pierce your own soul too. And she knows from that moment that Jesus will bring her joy and honour and pride, but also deep sorrow. A light to lighten the Gentiles. These Gentiles that Simeon is referring to are you and me. Right from the start, before Jesus is able to even speak, he is our light, our light to the Gentiles. His mission isn't to a small part of Palestine, it's to the whole world. Even the whole of creation. For this Messiah isn't simply a prophet sent to shake up the tribes of Israel, as in the past. This Messiah is so much more than what the Jewish rabbis and experts could ever have imagined. This Messiah is the Son of God, the very essence of God himself in human form. In his teaching and ministry, Jesus shares with his disciples and those who follow him the message from God of how God wants each human to come back to him stop following the wrong path and to return to their strong roots of faith. And Jesus teaches his disciples how to spread this message to others that they meet. He sends them out on missionary expeditions to practice what he taught them. And of course, we are the heirs to this teaching, heirs to these disciples, and our job is to go out into the world and spread the message of God's love and presence through Jesus. And as we experience the love of God for ourselves, we cannot keep it to ourselves selfishly. We have to pass it on. I'd like to finish with some words from Psalm 96. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it, let the fields be jubilant and everything in them, let all the trees of the forest sing for joy, let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth, 
He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in his faithfulness. Amen. So, whichever you choose, whether just to think about the, uh, the, the, the blessings or to act in the spirit of Jesus, just enjoy yourself as you enjoy a thousand reasons.
start, we're going to start with our head and think about all those in authority who have jobs or roles where they have to guide and lead others. It might be the government, teachers, the royal family. Think of somebody to pray for now. Dear Lord, we bring to you those who are called to guide, to make decisions and to have influence. We pray, Lord, for your wisdom to guide their decision making. And we pray that your compassion, your inclusion and your love for all guides difficult decisions that they need to be made. We bring to you those we are thinking about and ask for your blessing, Lord, in the times ahead. Amen. Now we think about our hearts. So we think about those who work or serve in social care, in health care. We think about our ministry team here in Holy Trinity. I want you to think of somebody is in that role of caring for us. And dear Lord, we bring those who are called to care and to love for others. We bring to you those who are called to serve, you in church or out and about in different jobs. We thank you for their service. And we pray that you keep them well. You bless them with energy and enthusiasm so they can continue to serve and care for all people. Dear Lord, we think of the person we're thinking about. We bring them to you and ask for your blessing of health and well being to protect all who serve you and serve others. Amen. And as we pray for our hands, we pray for the things that they can do, thinking about needs. So think about somebody who might have a need for healing. We think about people who may need a hug, who might be grieving or sad. So we think about our hands and we think about what we can do and what others need. So think about someone now who has something that they may particularly need help with. Dear Lord, we pray for your healing spirit. We thank you that you have given us a relationship through Jesus with you that we can come with our needs and with the needs of other people. We thank you that you know what needs to be done even when we don't. And Lord, we pray for your healing spirit to wash across that person we're thinking of now. We pray for your blessing and comfort and peace for those who are sad or troubled and those who are grieving. We pray for those who have a difficult time to experience your peace. And we pray, Lord, that we can help, that you can open our eyes to a need that we can meet, and that we do your work. Amen. And now we're going to think about our feet, and we're going to think about sharing the good news of Jesus. <clears throat> so dear Lord, we pray for ourselves, we pray for our, your congregation in this church, and across the country, we pray that this week and ahead, that you can guide our feet, that you can show us the path we need to walk to make this world more just, more fair, more compassionate and more kind. We pray that as you guide our feet this week, that we find our voices and tell others about your love for us and your love for them. And the great privilege that we have of being in an eternal relationship with you through your great gift of Jesus Christ, 
our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. And we're going to come together to finish with the Lord's Prayer. So we join together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, as we leave, finish our service. May God the Father, who guided Simeon and Anna, and shone a light on Jesus in our story, may our God lead us in our pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God the Son, who made miracles happen, transform our lives and make glad our hearts. Amen. And may God the Holy Spirit, who makes all this possible on earth, pour out his gifts on us who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. And the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Son of God be with us all today, next week and forever. Amen.